Hi everybody, Tim from Pool, Pool, uh, Pool Works doing another pool school here on pumps and filtration. This is prompted by a couple of customers who've had um, pumps that are far too big for their filter uh, in, their, in their systems and uh, th that has caused uh, issues with the filter in particular. So um, we'll start off with with that to, to, to begin. We've had a few, few people who've sort of decided that it was a good idea to, you know, go to wherever and buy an L cheapy pump. And invariably the thought is, well, bigger is better, but bigger is not better. Bigger is more detrimental to your back pocket and also to the filter itself. So uh, in normal filters, say a sand filter, uh, looks a bit like that with a handle on top or your cartridge filters a whole heap of little pleats and things like that. This filtration, the filter media themselves has a thing called uh, filter media rate, FMR, filter media rate. So the type of sand that you have in there or the the type of paper that you have there has a, a maximum uh, rate of water that can flow through it or should flow through it um, to effectively filter. Invariably uh, the normal domestic backyard filter usually would have maybe a maximum one horsepower pump on it because of the filter media rate. Uh, but what in reality ends up getting recommended by some of these other places is, you know, oh, V8's better than a V6, so take the V8, mate. What ends up happening is, in the case of the sand filter, instead of the the dirt and dust and debris being sort of caught up in this top section of the filter and the rest of it being sort of support for this top section of sand it actually gets driven much further down into the sand sometimes so uh, like the imbalance in the flow is so much that it's getting driven right through the sand and back to the pool um, now this process of driving all the dust and depths of the bed doesn't happen in a couple of seconds. It's over the space of a month or two months that more dirt and debris is packed on top and it's just forced down into the, the, the bottom bed of sand. Which means when you come to doing your backwash, the only part that you're backwashing is this top section again. So you do your minutes backwash and you clean the dust and debris out of the top section but you haven't done anything with this stuff down the bottom you would have to backwash the filter for a month to get rid of it all so again next cycle you go through you're filling up this and you're forcing more dust and debris down into the bottom when you do your next backwash you're cleaning this top layer of sand and the cycle starts all over again forcing more dust, dirt, debris, oils, crap into the bottom. Your actual filtration should be as gentle a flow of water through that filter as possible. This is why filter sand gets changed you know you might have to change your filter sand or it gets clunked up and you change the whole filter too early because the one and a half horsepower pump is forcing all of the dirt and debris far too far into the filter. The same things happened to another guy with a cartridge filter. Now if you think about a cartridge filter as basically paper, if you look at, if you blow up a cross section of that paper, you know, it's very thin, but the paper is a whole lot of fibres which allows the, the water to pass through. So the water's passing through. 
But what should be happening is the dust and dirt and debris is getting caught on or towards the surface here. But what's actually happening is all the particles that are, should be getting caught on the top there are actually getting forced in to the paper rather than being caught on top so that when you come to actually hose it off you hose off that section but you've got a whole heap of dust and dirt and debris and metals stuck in the paper because the pump's too damn big what happens there is instead of this cartridge filter lasting you know, one and a half, two, three years, it's dead in three months. Because the stuff's being forced inside the, the, the paper instead of getting caught on the outside. So that is why bigger is not better. And you really need to make sure that you're not just whacking any old pump onto uh, onto your filter or cartridge filter because you will kill it. Now in saying that as well you don't want to go well does that mean smaller is better? Because if you put in a you know, 0.5 horsepower pump thinking well uh, you know that's okay the smaller must be better then. No it's not. Because you have to you have to be able to produce enough flow back through the filter to actually backwash out this top level. So you know, if you ideal world, you get new sand in there, but you've got too small a filter uh, pump in there, then you don't end up backwashing all this stuff out down the drain. It doesn't get get uh, you don't get rid of it. So you end up having a big gluggy, greasy mess at the top because you're not getting a proper backwash done on it. So our recommendation has been and always will be energy efficient pump because you get the best of both worlds with an energy efficient pump. You can get the lovely flow, low flow rate coming through very gently to filter the water out very well but then you can ramp it up to a 1 or a 1.25 um, horsepower pump to give it a really thorough backwash. So you're getting energy savings, you're getting great filtration and you're getting a good backwash. Same thing with your cartridge filter, you've got lovely gentle flow going through the cartridge filter so all of this debris is caught on the surface and not being forced into the middle. And then when it comes to hosing out time it should hose off a lot easier. So always energy efficient pump and have a look at our VS pump eFish oh that's terrible spelling uh, uh, uh. have a look at our VS pump uh, programming video that I uploaded yesterday that explains the process that we use to go through and do the Hayward energy efficient pump it's not a case of putting one of these buggers on there and just going, you beauty, you've got to actually tune it up to the system. You have to have an operating pressure gauge to make sure you're getting a good pressure through that, um, that filter, either of those filters, to make sure it's working properly. This stuff really is not DIY. It's not DIY. You know, pool cleaner to a certain extent, yeah, a bit of DIY there. There's little nuances there. But this stuff here is definitely not DIY. So again, as ever, if there's any questions, if you've got any feedback, further questions from this or anything about your pool, send me an email, come into the shop and ask me. And uh, what I'll probably do is I'll do you an instructional video to answer your questions. Thanks very much. See you later.